with all the vile actions and words directed towards our President Donald Trump by the liberal mainstream media it's now really cool to be able to report something lighthearted for a change. It's awesome to see President Trump throw the hammer at world leaders from nations which have been taking advantage of America's generosity for decades, but it's also great when we see President Trump throw a joke or two at them also. As you can see below President Donald Trump joked that he enjoyed French President Emmanuel Macron's official statement during a bilateral meeting between the two leaders. Even though not being able to understand what he was saying, it sounded beautiful. I have no idea what he said. It sounded great. Trump joked after Macron's statement. But what is even more great about this comment is that it turned a moment of laughter throughout the entire room. Even Macron laughed at Trump's joke as he explained he was remembering the president's visit a year prior to Paris, France, for the Bastille Day celebration 2017. Here is more on the NATO meeting via chicks on the right. The left has gone out of their way to paint President Trump's stern words and actions towards NATO allies as controversial, but like it or not. His approach seems to be working, according to Fox News. NATO leaders pledged their unwavering commitment to boost defense spending on Wednesday, following stern words from President Trump criticizing European leaders for spending too little. The U.S. and European allies signed a declaration stating they are committed to improving the balance of sharing the costs and responsibilities of alliance membership. The declaration comes after confrontational and testy discussions between Trump and other NATO leaders. But please. Keep blubbering about how he's only making things worse. Since the election, Trump has criticized NATO countries for not paying their fair share, while suggesting he would only come to the defense of NATO nations that fulfilled their financial obligation. Trump also has pressed NATO countries to fulfill their goal of spending 2% of their gross domestic products on defense by 2024. NATO estimates that 15 members, or just over half, will meet that benchmark based on current trends. As NATO vows to pursue those targets, Trump is seeking even more. Awesome. In a statement Wednesday, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said Trump, at the summit, suggested that countries not only meet their commitment of 2% of their GDP on defense spending, but that they increase it to 4%. Trump wants to see our allies share more of their burden and at a very minimum meet their already stated obligations. And this was an epic moment. Before sitting down for the first official meeting of the day, the president engaged in a testy exchange with NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg. He pressed why the U.S. should continue to pay money to the military alliance while the countries purchase energy from Moscow. We are stronger together. Stoltenberg said, while acknowledging there can be differences among allies, but how can you be together when you're getting energy from the group you want protection from? Trump responded, using Germany as an example. Trump challenged Stoltenberg to explain why Berlin was getting energy from Russia, and asserted that Germany was totally controlled by and captive to Russia over a pipeline project. Bingo! That pipeline project, Nord Stream 2 pipeline, doubles the amount of gas Russia can send directly to Germany, while sidestepping transit countries like Ukraine. The project is opposed by the U.S. and some European Union members. We're supposed to protect you against Russia and yet you make this deal with Russia, Trump said of Germany. Explain that. It can't be explained. Called out. Yeah, I'd say Trump is winning for America right now. Trump's meeting with Macron came on the sidelines of the annual NATO summit where he already met with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Trump has criticized NATO countries in the past for failing to meet their defense spending obligations under the alliance, something the U.S. has had to pick up the slack for since the 50s. Germany spends only 1.24% of its GDP on defense while France spends 1.79%. But what is probably even more alarming is the fact that only five countries out of 29 in the alliance meet the goal of 2% of GDP. Of course, the U.S. always has to end up having to spend more than everyone else at approximately 3.57%. And then people wonder why we elected a man whose slogan is America first. Don't you agree it's about time the rest of the world paid their fair share? If they have money to take in Muslim refugees. They have money to pour into NATO.